It's not a great day out there. Another sea of red. As you can see, you've got some of the big coins down. Nier down 9.65. Helium's down 10.41. Uh, Tau, which is bit tens, are down 11.59. Bottom line is, it's a sea of red. And what I think is that I think what I said yesterday, I think this dip is not over. I'm going to show you today why I think this dip is not over. We have Bitcoin coming back to touch this trend line. Big question is, how is this a real correction? If it is a real correction, how long is this correction going to last? Should we be buying? Should we be worried? Is there something wrong with a, with a Bitcoin ETF? That is what today is about. We've got to talk about this dip because initially it was just a pullback and now it's playing it's playing out to be exactly what I thought it would play out to be, which is that dip, which is that one correction, one of the big corrections that we're going to have in the cycle. So let's talk about it and let's talk about what it's safe to buy and maybe even make a list of the tokens that we should be buying in this dip. So let's do it, guys. I hate doing these shows. I hate doing these shows. You know why I hate doing these shows? Because people don't want to hear about the market going down. But it's a reality that the market's going down. And the reality is that if you are smart when the market goes down, then what you do when the market goes down is you do this. So listen, I've got new sound effects now. When the market goes down, and then that's what happens if you do that when the markets are going down. So now I've got new fancy schmancy sound effects which make us uh, which make us winners which make us winners but today we are actually going to talk about the dip because i think it's time to to talk about it talk about the elephant in the room we're going to look at how long this dip is going to last we're going to look at what price target the dip is going to hit we're going to look at what tokens we should be buying after this dip that's what today is about so if you don't want to talk about the dip if you don't want to face the reality then uh, maybe leave now if you do, then smash the subscribe button. Join us, join us, join us. I've got some really good news when it comes to subscribers. I think we need to talk about the subscriber news for a second. So, I mean, there's two bits of good news here. First bit of good news, there it is. You can see that we have, we banter is exploding. You can see in June, we grew by 5,000 subs. In July, we grew by 5,000 subs. August, September, and October uh, were very bad months. But then November, 17,000 subs. In December, 12,000 subs. And the month is still going on. Why am I showing you this? Well, one is because you should subscribe and you should join probably the biggest and strongest crypto community in the world. But that's not why I'm showing you this. This is a metric that shows you how much new retail money is coming into crypto. And what you can see is that the the end of the bear market was October well, of the of the of the bad part of the market was August September and October and now in November and December December is going to be a bigger month for us than November you can see that retail is coming in and bringing in all their money so subscribe to the channel smash the like button if you haven't already done that you know how this works the more you smash the like the more alpha I give on days like today you want the alpha because the alpha tells you what you should be buying. The buying is like when you put the coin in the slot machine and then you hold it, you hold it and then... You see, I've got my new toy, I've got a new toy, I've got a new toy, I've got a new toy, which is amazing, which is amazing. Okay, so um, just before we start talking about the meat and potatoes of the show today, remember, where's my Christmas hat? What happened to my Christmas hat? I can't do the Christmas promotion without a Christmas hat. What? Stolen, Sheldon stolen. Okay, we are going to do the Christmas promotion. So if you don't have an account on Bybit, sign up on Bybit, deposit $100 into your account, you could win. Somebody is going to win $150,000 between now and the end of the year. We will do that draw. Remember to please select a box. So select box one, box two, box three. Later on, I'll pull out the boxes and we'll hand out the prize to whoever won. And I, yesterday, one of the boxes had a hundred and was it $150,000 yesterday? So one of the boxes had $150,000 yesterday and someone didn't win it. Also, while we're here, let's we could just talk about this. Let's get the, let's get all the formalities out of the way. Go to Banter Bubbles, click on the Winner Bitcoin tab over here. Click on that Winner Bitcoin tab over here and um, get make your prediction because you've got two weeks to make predictions. You can make five predictions in two weeks. All you need is an exchange account with one of our links. If you don't have one, sign up and you'll get $30,000 in sign-up bonuses or $8,000 in sign-up bonuses. And you stand a chance to win one full Bitcoin. There are, you have until Christmas. So today's the 13th. There are 12 days left to enter this. You can have five predictions in 12 days. All you need is a banter account. 
This is the easiest way to win a Bitcoin. Trust me, trust me, trust me on this. All right, let's get into the formalities are now out the way. Let's get into the alpha of the show, the highest alpha per minute show on the entire, entire, entire interwebs. Um, we do have the FOMC meeting tonight. I'm not going to broadcast it. You, the reason I'm not going to broadcast it is I just think that it is an absolute, absolute, absolute nothing burger. I think everybody knows that Powell's not going to increase interest rates. The last time we did broadcast it, the prices moved up by $50 on Bitcoin. It's going to be the same. Powell's not going to say anything new. He's going to say we're reliant on the data. We're waiting for inflation to come down. The one thing we need to look out for, though, is that the, the markets, the NASDAQ, I mean, let's just quickly look at the NASDAQ. So you've got, um, uh, let's go, US tech stocks. So you've got US tech, and the markets are almost, almost, almost at all-time highs. Now, the question is, how will Powell respond? Well, in fact, there we go. The market, the NASDAQ is now at an all-time high. The question is, how does Powell reconcile not increasing interest rates when markets are completely exploding? Remember, as, as markets run, the markets run, it's not, okay, they're not at all-time highs. They're almost, almost, almost at all-time highs. How does Powell reconcile this with not increasing interest rates? But I guess the market's telling you that they're not going to increase interest rates. Also, we had the PPI numbers pretty much exactly, exactly, exactly on expectations. So no inflation or, or specifically no inflation um, running away. That's, that, that's what's happening at the moment. So we, wait, we will watch what Powell does today. I don't think it's going to move the markets. I don't think it's worth doing a big, long live stream. But uh, who knows? Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. If it is, if something happens, I'll jump out of bed. I'm not going to be in bed, but you know what I mean. I'll come here and we can, we can all do a show together. Let me know in the chat how you're feeling. Let me know where you're from. Let's see if the players are back. I see Don Leon's here. I see LM No Nose is here. Waterman's here. Jeff is here. And Anna Cardoza next year, she, she, she's a mega Republican. She's a Make America Great Republican. Um, who's this LM Knows? LM Mo Knows who is spamming the chat. Please stop spamming the chat, sir. Please, please. Someone said, I did predict this 13 days ago. Exactly. I did predict that this dip would coming. Someone said, shout out, run, nit par, shout out, shout out to you. Shout out to you. People from Romania, people from all over the world, the best community in the world. Let's talk about where we're at. So this is where we're at. It's red. No, not a surprise that it's red. Ma markets don't just go up. Even in the best bull markets, markets don't go up. What we needed to check was whether this is a dip, or whether this is a real correction. In the beginning, it felt like it was a bit of a liquidation hunt. Remember, there was that wick down, it wicked out $400 million worth of, of, of derivatives, and a lot of people thought that this dip was over. I came out and said, guys, sorry, I know it's not the popular opinion, but this dip is not over. And people started to have bets with me. So Vinny says, thanks for saving us. Up we go. I said, let's take a bet. He said, Sure, I think we'll see 44K before we see 40K. I think he's completely wrong. I think we're going to see 40K before we see 44K. Anyway, we haven't landed up taking the bet, but I'm confident enough to take the bet. And I'll show you in a few seconds why I'm confident enough to take the bet. Right now, when I look at Bitcoin, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing Bitcoin starting to come down. The reality for me is I think Bitcoin's coming down to somewhere around this line. So to me, 37, 38, maybe 39, that's more or less... Uh, where it is. I said yesterday, I'm going to wait for 37,600 to start buying. The truth is I'll probably start buying a little bit before that because it never goes down to the level that you want it to get down to. And you don't want to miss the buying opportunity, specifically so early in the bull market. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Because when you look at a cycle, and I'm going to start, I'm going to zoom out here to show you where we're at. When you look at a bull market, it's taking very slow today. Trading view must be very, very, very busy. Good business, but very busy today. When you are early, early, early in the cycle, here, yeah, even if you invest wrong, even if you buy, let's say that you bought Bitcoin over here. Okay, well, sorry, see, it's, it's refreshing now. Let's say that you bought Bitcoin over here and then it dipped. You see, in the big scheme of things, that dip is nothing because you've got the parabolic stage still to come. And because we're so early in the bull market, buying stuff early in the bull market is very, very, very forgiving. So when you get a dip, Early in the bull market, what do you do? And what happens at the end of the bull market? You got it. So right now we are early in the bull market. This is your signal to buy. As I said, I'm looking for about 37, 38,000. Uh, the reason why I don't think that this dip is 
over is because of this nasty little chart over here. This is the total leverage chart on all altcoins except Bitcoin uh, and ETH. You can see that we're nowhere near where, where, um, where the leverage is finished. When will I start buying? I want the leverage to get to levels somewhere around here. You see, this is the, where I want the leverage to get to. I need the leverage to get to be reduced by another 30%. I want the leverage to be back at, I mean, ideally, if we could get the leverage back here, that would make me a very, very, very happy person. Until then, I just don't think that these that that we can continue to go up on a healthy bull market. I, I don't think that we can continue to go up unless the leverage gets wiped out. And history has shown that my analysis here is correct. Let me try and show you what I mean. Every time that the leverage gets high, there is a correction. Leverage high, correction. Leverage high, correction. Leverage high, correction. Leverage high, correction. Every single time. And usually what happens is we flush out all the leverage and then we continue to, we continue to run up. When will I be convinced that this dip is over? I'll be convinced that this dip is over when the leverage goes below this line over here. If the leverage goes somewhere be below the $7 billion mark and the $6 billion mark, to me, that's a sign that the leverage is coming out. Right now, this is the only indicator that I'm watching to tell me whether or not this lev the leverage is out the market. For as long as people are comfortable enough to take leverage on their altcoins like absolute degens, it means to me that we haven't shaken out the weak hands and, uh, and, that, and, that, and that the dip is going to continue. And it does look like this dip is more than a dip. It looks to me like this dip is one of the main corrections that we're going to get up into this cycle. We are expecting many, many corrections this cycle, probably six or seven corrections. I'll just give you some examples. This is the 2017 cycle. In fact, this is the 2017 cycle. In the 2017 cycle, there were 10 corrections or, or nine corrections. Let's quickly count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There were 10 corrections in the 2017 cycle. All of them above 20%. This one was 27, 37, 40, 23, 39, 38, 34, 42. There are going to be many corrections. The next cycle was not, not, not much different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven corrections. In this cycle, we've had three. So in this cycle, we've had three corrections. That, that's, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much where we're at. So let's look at, let's look at why I think this liquidation hunt or this, this li li liquidations hunt that we had initially has now become a correction. Well, for me, the data shows this. What data specifically am I looking at or what indicator specifically am I looking at? Generally, people look at moving averages, right? So generally, people take the 200 uh, day or 200 week moving average. Wow, um, trading view is very slow today. Hey? Look at that. So, and they draw the 200 or they draw, they look at the moving average. And generally, when you breach a moving average, that is usually a break of trend. But there is another measure, which is very similar to moving averages, which can also show you when you've entered correction territory. So you don't want to have to wait until you break this 200 week or 200 day moving average to say, hold on a second, this is a correction, because then you're going to get this whole drawdown over here. There is a derivative of uh, moving averages, which can tell you if you're in, if you're in correction territory or not. That derivative is called the Mayer multiple. So for those of you who don't know what the Mayer multiple is, here it is. I got it for you off Google. The Mayer multiple is an oscillator calculated as the ratio between price and the 200-day moving average. So what it is, it's an oscillator that sits between the price and the 200-day moving average. It's an oscillator that sits in between the price and the 200-day moving average, and it tells you whether or not you're in a correction. Now, what you can see is that since this multiple has moved, we have now officially entered on, on this multiple, we've entered, we've entered into a correction territory. We've entered into, into real correction territory. And if we've entered into correction territory, we need to understand corrections. Because if we understand the corrections, then we know when it's safe to buy. Then we know if it's safe to buy. And then we also know what it is safe to buy. So this is no longer a, this is no longer a little dip. This is now a real correction. So Initially, we said, okay, it's a small dip. Now it's not. Now it's like, okay, a small dip. 
now, now it is a correction. And as I said to you, we need corrections. Corrections are very, very, very healthy. And we're going to have lots of these corrections along the way. In the cycle, even, in this cycle, even though we went up 2,300% or whatever the number was, we still got 10 corrections along the way. And in this cycle, the same thing. Bitcoin went from 3,000 to 50,000 to 69,000. And we still got like 10 corrections along the way. We want these corrections. They're very, very, very healthy. Let me tell you something. You're just lucky that you're here now. Because in 2017, when we had corrections, it felt like the world was going to end. I remember being around in 2017, and every time Bitcoin corrected, I shut myself and I sold everything. You know why? Because we didn't know if Bitcoin was going to exist. We kept thinking to ourselves, we kept thinking to ourselves, in 2017, there was a massive, massive, massive question mark as to whether Bitcoin was a real thing and whether it was going to continue to exist. So every time that the price went from, I don't know, 2,000 or 1,500 back to 1,000 or, or back to 750, we thought that's it. That's the end of Bitcoin. Now you know for sure that Bitcoin's here to stay. Now you know for sure that altcoins are here to stay. And you know that these corrections are just corrections. It's, it's not the end of the world. The market, you're lucky if you only came in now, you didn't get all the returns, but you came into a much more resilient market. As this tweet says, for every 1% Bitcoin moves, 55% less is liquidated than in 2021. The market has become more resilient. The dips have become less violent. And also these dips are very much a part of the cycle. This is textbook, textbook, textbook cycle. Pre-halving retrace. You have a pre-halving retrace. In 2016, it was 38%. In 2020, it was minus 20%. You have a pre-halving rally. You have a reaccumulation period. We are following this chart pretty much to a T. Like, here we go. Look at the, every time we're into the green, there's a bit of a, a dip. Every time we go to the yellow, we get a, a, a little bit of a, of a thing here. We're playing out exactly, exactly, exactly on this halving cycle. So this dip is absolutely, absolutely nothing to worry about. But we have to understand the dip. We have to understand how long it's going to last. How low will it go? Um... And the best way to do it is to actually look at previous data. I keep saying, so let's look, let, let's look at the previous data. We've got a 2017 bull run. In this bull run, there were, let's quickly look how many corrections there were. There were uh, 10 corrections. In 2021, there were seven corrections. But look, in 2017, even though there were 10 corrections, we went from $422 to $20,000 a Bitcoin. We had a 4,600% 4, uh, return. In 2021, in 2021, we had we went from four thousand dollar Bitcoin to sixty nine thousand dollar Bitcoin. We had a one thousand six sixteen x return basically, so one six three six. But we still had seven corrections along the way. That's that's what the cycle looked like. In this cycle, let me just show you guys. That's what the cycle looked like. In this cycle, we are we've had one, two, three corrections, and we are now going through our fourth correction, uh, our fourth real correction. Now let's look at how vicious these corrections actually were. So again, we, 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 we love spreadsheets these days. We, we make you a lot of spreadsheets. We need to understand how long this shit will last. So let me make it a bit bigger because a lot of you are complaining that you are on mobile. Let me zoom in a lot so that you can see it. So let's look at 2017. We had 10 corrections in 2017. The average correction, the average drawdown was 35.45%. Notice that in 2021, we had, okay, seven corrections, and the average drawdown was 28.48%, which means that logically, in this cycle, the average drawdown will probably be around 20%, and it right now is exactly on 20%. So we're looking for about a 20% pullback. So why did I say that I wanted a $27,500, uh, uh, sorry, a, uh, a um, $37,500 Bitcoin, Let's go, let's, wow, trading view is very slow today. Okay, so let's, let, let's wait for it to load up. There it is. Okay, so I go to the cycle top. I go to the cycle top over here and I draw my line and I'm looking for about a 20% correction. Where does the 20% correction take me? More or less, yeah. Like that's 17%, 37,000 is about, is about uh, 17%. And that's where I think we're going to be. And that's why I'm going to start buying somewhere around there. Now let's look at how long these dips actually last. So in 2017, you can see that it's quite distributed. It's quite important that you, that you understand that 
it's quite distributed. And in a dip, you have two phases, or let's call it three phases, two phases. The first phase is how long until you get to the bottom. And then the next part is how long from the time that you get to the bottom until you get to the price that you were at before the recovery, b before the dip. So we, we mapped it out for you guys. The first dip, 39 days, right? And 87 days to recover. The next dip, 36 days and 75 days to recover. Now look what happens. As you get later in the cycle, the dips become way quicker and the recoveries become way quicker. You can see that because you start going more parabolic. You, you, you're now getting to the much more parabolic stage. Same thing, in, same thing happened here in 2021. So here's a spreadsheet. Here's pretty much the, the, the nuts and bolts of the whole thing. In 2017, it took about 30 days to get from the top to the bottom of the dip. About 30 days. In 2021, 21 days. Okay, in 2023, remember early, early, early in the cycle, 37 days. So let's say that we're looking at about a two to three week dip, two to three week dip from the time that we started going down until the time that we actually um, get there. So how long have we been going down for? Let's quickly go onto the daily. Have I mentioned today that trading view is very slow? I, I may have mentioned it. I may have mentioned it once or twice. Okay, so when did we start dipping? Let's quickly go and, okay, so there it is. Okay, so we started dipping over here and we said about two to three weeks. Where does that take us? It takes us to about a week before the ETF approvals. One week before the ETF approvals. Is that a healthy dump? It's a healthy dump, a very healthy dump. But you can see, one week before the ETF approvals. So when am I expecting this dip to end? 20 days after it started, maybe two weeks because we've got the, the big magnet. I'm not expecting this dip to go on until the end of the year. That's what, and again, I'm only using averages here. Remember, averages are exactly that. They are the average. They're not, they're not the thing. Now, the question is, from the bottom, how long until we get back to where we started, which is 44,000? 2017, on average, on average, 41.4 days. 2021, on average, 30 days. Logically, if you follow the pattern, we can probably say that this one takes 20 days. So 20 days, 20 to 30 days from when we start there until we get back to 44. Now, all this is with one caveat. We may get an ETF or we may not get an ETF. So you got you to factor out. All I'm showing you is I'm showing you the averages. I'm showing you how to deal with the fact that there's going to be dips. For a lot of people that are watching this, they don't, they haven't been here before. They don't know what these dips are about. And look, truth is that, oh, hold on, let me just change this. Uh, let's zoom in. I'm on the wrong screen. Okay, so let me zoom in, zoom out here. If this is your first cycle, if this is your first cycle, then don't worry, don't worry this is your first cycle because you're not the only one who's currently having the first dip cycle ever. You know who else is here now and having a, their first um, uh, 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 crypto pullback cycle? I'll tell you who else is here and having their first crypto pullback cycle, the institutions. So up until now, they haven't really been part of a bull run. Now, institutions, as you know, are gung-ho investing in crypto. You can see that because if you look at the TradFi data over here, over here, if you look at the TradFi data over here, you can see that the, the open interest in the CME futures, which is where all the institutions are at, spiked up, spiked up over here to levels which, which it's never been, never, ever, ever been at before. However, 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 I want to show you something else. After briefly reaching New all-time highs on Friday, Bitcoin futures open interest in the CME dropped by $930 million in one day, the biggest single decline since the original BlackRock ETF filing. So what happened? Institutions capitulated. Institutions got flashed, flashed out. Why did they get flashed out? Because institution, institutions aren't used to massive price movement. Okay, now let me explain to you what I mean. It's all very well that I say to you, listen, if you buy crypto, be ready for the volatility. If I tell you, look, guys, 
If you come to crypto and you invest in crypto, you can make life-changing money. But remember one thing, if you do, get ready for volatility. You say to yourself, unbelievable, I'm all in, until the volatility actually comes. And you start feeling it on your own, you know, kahunas. And you start feeling that pain of, oh my God, I'm leveraged, which is what CME open interest is, leverage. I'm leveraged, the price is going down, institutions have never seen an instrument go down 10% in one day unless it's the fucking biggest correction in the world. Just think to yourself, you're a, an institution. This Bitcoin thing is pretty new to you. You're used to trading stocks. The average stock, if an average stock goes down 3% in one day, let me tell you, that is a disaster, a crash. Now, let's look at Bitcoin. Let's look at, at the bubbles. Nia's down 7.4 cent today, and I haven't even looked at the price. Helium's down 8.7 percent today. I haven't even looked at the price. Audi's down 9.25 percent. Who gives a shit? Okay, that's not a correction. This is like a normal day in paradise. Imagine you're an institution. You used to one or two percent movement in stocks. All of a sudden, you start getting a 10 percent move in Bitcoin. By the way, 10 percent is not a lot for any institutional traders watching this. You know nothing. You know you, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Okay, so, so, um, are you delivering? Are you Santa Claus, bro? Santa Claus just delivered the the Christmas boxes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Santa Claus. Which box have they selected today? Um, box number one. They selected box number one. Okay, box number one. It is. The boxes have arrived, ladies and gentlemen. Should I open it? I'll open it after the se after the segment. Um, so if you're an institution, you see this 10% move in Bitcoin, you think to yourself, oh my God, what is this asset? And you quickly, quickly, quickly get out of this asset because you know that it can go down another 10, 20, 30% and you're leveraged. And that's exactly what happened to the institutions. It's a, probably the first time that it's, that it's actually happened. So we had two cohorts actually capitulate. The first cohort that capitulated was the institutions, the, C the people trading um, CME futures, uh, 100 and an 8K uh, and OI contract with 11, uh, 11K closed. They closed 10% of, the, of their leverage. The second uh, cohort that capitulated was the short-term paper hands holders, and they sold their positions short. That, uh, uh, they, they sold, they, they sold their, their, their positions. Uh, um, um, they, they sold their spot positions. Who was buying those spot positions? <laughs> Tell you who was buying those spot positions. That's who was buying the spot positions. The strong hands. The str I mean, look, I'm not one for these. Uh, I'm not one for these um, conspiracy theories. I don't believe in these conspiracy theories. Bullshit. But if I was BlackRock and I wanted to seed my ETF with some cheap Bitcoin, what do I do? I just trigger a liquidation hunt, get some panic into the market one month before the thing. Then I quickly seed my ETF. And Bob's your uncle. Now, I don't know if that happened or not. But what I can tell you is what I see on-chain. And what did I see on-chain? I see on-chain that the number of entities with 1,000 Bitcoin, what happened to them in the last week? Well, they went quite parabolic. Look at that. They went quite parabolic. You see that? That's exactly what happened. So what, what did we get? We got paper hands dumping their Bitcoin into these hands and these hands, and that's all that happened in the last couple of days. So now, let me ask you a question, honestly, honestly, honestly. But be honest, be honest in the chat. Where were you, where were you, which, who were you in the last couple of days when Bitcoin has came down? Here, were you these guys who were dumping their short-term paper hands? Because if you were, you've been watching the wrong channel, or were you these guys? Who were getting ready for the next cycle? Putting money in the slot machine, getting ready for the next cycle. Because once, the, once we turn, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. You must make this thing longer, James. You must keep looping, you know? Loop it and loop it and loop it. I think it's a great sound effect. It's going to keep us here. It's going to keep us here for the whole bull market. It's going to keep us here for the whole bull market. Okay, so tell me in the chat. I see you guys are going crazy in the chat. Now, 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 now. Okay, so that's what we know about, about the dip. So what's going to, now, so I've asked you, 
Who were you in the previous dip? Now I'm asking you another question. Who are you going to be when this goes down to 37,000, 37,500? Are you going to be this guy? Paper hands, paper hands. Or are you going to be this guy? Are you going to be this guy? Or, yeah, th you know what this is? This is when you take candy from baby and you transfer 1,042 Bitcoin from Coinbase to an unknown wallet, which you bought from the little paper hands. And you say, thanks for playing the game. And you take it and you, you take it off the exchange into the wallet. So that's, that's what it is. Now, let's just talk about what I, what, what I spoke about in the beginning, beginning, beginning of the show. I said, look, we're very early in the bull market. In fact, if this is right, we're about 28.9%. And I think that we actually are 28.9% into the bull market. Remember that it, when we are this early in the bull market, the market is very, 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 very forgiving. What do I mean? I mean that if you make a mistake now and you land up buying Bitcoin now, and here, if you land up buying Bitcoin here and Bitcoin does go down to here, the truth is it's insignificant in the big scheme of things. You buy it here and you, and you hold it here, but then you get all this for free. And the same thing happened in this cycle. And that's pretty, pretty much where we are in the cycle. You bought it here. It went all the way down to, yeah, let's just draw it again. So you bought it here. It went all the way. Why, is, why isn't it drawing? Okay, all the way down to here. And then if you just sit and hold, it takes you all up to here. When you buy a dip early in a cycle, you should relax. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I bought, a, you know, I got caught up in FOMO yesterday, the day before. Landed up buying some AVAX. Bought it at a very, very, very high price. Am I worried about it? No. Why not? Because I'm early in the cycle. My worst case scenario is that I'll hold it down from 44 or 40. No, I think I paid 40 or 41. And it's going to go all the way down to I mean, it'll go down to 30. Do you think I care? No, because I know that it's going to go up to, I don't know, 300 or 200 or whatever the number is. So, okay, so I just hold it a bit longer. In the early part of the bull market, when you are 28.7% through the bull market, mistakes are forgiven and forgivable. Later in the bull market, we'll have a very, very, very different discussion but early in the bull market, it doesn't matter because you're forgiven. It's the training ground. It's not, it's not when you have to be super, super, super focused. Reality is that, you know, if we follow all the other cycles, we are here. You make a mistake here, you've got this whole time. You've got this whole, whole, whole time to fix it. All right, be conservative. Maybe, maybe this is not such a long bull market. We, we cut it over here. But you've got this whole time to be conservative. So then the question is, what do we do during this, this, this dip? Tell you what I do. I sit here and I hope and pray that it dips further. I sit here and I hope that this market goes down to 37,500. You know why? Because what I'm doing now is I'm starting to prepare a buy list. And I'm not going to give you that buy list because every person's portfolio is going to have a different buy list. But all I'm doing now is I'm making a, a, a list of tokens that I want to buy and where I want to buy them. I'll show you, you know, I, you know, I, I hate just, just saying things and not actually showing you things. So I just want to show you, um, literally, I just want to show you literally, like, like I want to show you how, how pathetic I am. Literally, if you look at the sheet, it's called buy on, wait, let me see, you can't see it over there. It's called buy on dip, you see, buy on dip. And I just made like a list and I'm, I'm starting to put together a whole list of tokens that I personally want to buy on, on the dip. Personally buy on the dip. That's, that's pretty much um, what I'm doing at the moment. Someone says, weren't we supposed to talk about a portfolio? Yes. And we will do that probably not tomorrow, maybe Friday, because tomorrow we're doing a Cosmos show. The reason why I did this is because so many people were phoning me worried about the stupid dip. I was like, guys, come on, let's just talk about the dip for, for one second. So literally now what we do is we make a list and we relax. We make a list and we relax. And I'll show you, I'll show you why. Um, I'll show you why. So we make a, a dip and we relax. Why? Because there are a whole lot of predictions. One of the predictions is that Van Eck, who's an ETF company, is forecasting $2.4 billion of inflow into Bitcoin spot ETFs in Q1 of 2024. And a new Bitcoin all-time high by Q4 of 2024. 
<laughs> I know that if I make a mistake, I'm going to be forgiven. I know that, that, that if I make a mistake this early in the cycle, I'm going to be forgiven. What I also know is that every time that Bitcoin dips in a bear market, in a bull market, it means a capital rotation. So I've been around for long enough. And every time Bitcoin dips, it means that alt gets stronger and stronger. And that's, that, that, that is, I've seen that every single time. I also know that when Bitcoin dips, the RSIs get reset and that sets us up for more buying. So you can see yesterday we were all in the neutral zone. Now look at some of the RSIs on the four hour, they're all moving into buy zone. On the 24 hour, we're starting to look a bit more neutral. On the weekly, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So what do I do? I prepare myself for, uh, I start making a buy list. I read this from Alex Beck. He says, I wish I had some input on this dip to make you feel better. A TA says we bounce here. Nothing goes up. Look at these past dips. But I'm just employing the most, the most efficient, effective strategy. Doing other stuff, not caring, not watching. And that's exactly my advice to you. My advice to you is, if you're worried about this dip, then go and do something else because you're early in the cycle and you're going to be forgiven. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much the story. I did say to you that two things. One is that dips bring in moves in money from one ecosystem to another. The other thing that I said to you is that Van Eck is predicting that $2.4 billion will go into the ETF by the end of Q1 2024. If they're right, nothing to worry about. If 2.4 billion doesn't move in Q1, or we don't see at least a billion dollars flow into the ETF in the first week, then we may have a real correction because then this whole buy the rumor, sell the news thing on the ETF. The other thing that Van Eck predicted, and by the way, they made 15 very, very, very good predictions. And the reason why these are very good predictions is because it shows you how the institutions are thinking that are not crypto centric. So it's not our, 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 our echo chamber. And what they're saying here, what they're saying here is, I mean, they're saying Bitcoin halving will, will have minimal market disruption. They're saying that ETH won't flip Bitcoin, but will outperform major tech stocks. They're saying that ETH, EIP 4844, uh, Ethereum layer twos will start capturing most of the value. But if you scroll down over here, you start realizing that A, they're forecasting that DEXs will hit all time highs. And they start talking a lot about Solana. So you can see that the market is setting up for this Bitcoin ETH Solana. So what I'm expecting is I'm expecting the next futures ETF to be a Solana ETF and the next spot ETF after Ethereum to be a, uh, 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 um, a Solana ETF. Then they also talk about Immutable X. They're saying a, break, a breakout blockchain game may surpass a million daily players. And they talk about specifically Immutable X being the, the, the chain where this game will come from. Okay, uh, Solana is projected to become the top three blockchains by market cap TVL and value. It's exactly what I said to you. Deepin, they're also talking about the Deepin, which is a decentralized physical infrastructure narrative uh, being amazing. And yeah, I mean, they talk about KYC compliant DeFi apps led by Uniswap will likely surpass the non-KYC one. So they're talking about um, uh, the industry actually getting much more uh, thing. Interesting, when they talk about Solana, I think Jeremy a number LA, of things are happening. Who, by the way, said that you know, he was a Bitcoin maxi at one point. Now he's talking about Solana. Listen. Right now, we're seeing rapid technology maturation. You're seeing that with this huge rally in Solana, which, if, mm -hmm. if you're not familiar, is, is sort of uh, makes using blockchains fast and, and relatively easy. I think a number of things are happening right now. We're seeing. He's, he's, not, he's now starting to talk, talk about Solana. So that's what I said to you. Three things you can do on this dip. One is you can make a buy list. Two is you can do nothing at all and just go and do other stuff and just relax because we're so early in the cycle that even if you made a mistake, your wife probably won't know about it. The third thing that you can do in the cycle is you can obviously go to banter bubbles. Remember, you can win the Bitcoin and you can start looking for the tokens that recover the quickest. So for example, we know what recovered the quickest this time around. We know it was AVAX that recovered the quickest. Cardano actually recovered quite fast. Look at the ones that recover the quickest. You're looking for two things. Did it recover the quickest? And did it not fall as fast or, or as far? I will make you a list to show you the ones that recovered the quickest and didn't fall as far because those are the ones that are resilient. But off the top of my head, like a token like Injective, a token like Kuji, Kujira. So 
Kujira's hardly even down. It's like, it was at 480. Injective. I mean, we've all seen injective. I don't want to speak about those too much because we've spoken about them ad nauseum. Uh, AVEX. Okay, AVEX is now going back to my buy, to where I bought it. So I'm, you see, I'm not worried. Bitcoin's actually climbing. I still think it's not the end of the dip, though. I still think it's actually not the end of the dip. Um, what else is there? Let's talk about some other altcoins. Uh, RabbitX apparently launched an amazing, amazing um, app today, which is a perpetual trading app. This is a, one of those perpetual trading DEXs. The token has done amazing, amazing, amazing uh, performance. So let's we could just go look at it. RBX. I think it's RBX. Yeah, RabbitX. It has pumped quite a bit, but still like a relatively low market up, $183 million. Just want to show you how much it's pumped. So you, you do get the full picture. It's gone from two and a half cents to 18 cents. So you're buying it after 7x. Um, then you've got um, uh, something else. Suzu is being released from Singapore. Um, and when that happens, I think you need to look at the OpenX token, the OX token, because then you'll be back and you'll be operating the exchange again. So I think that might happen. Obviously, I think you guys saw this, which was, I mean, this blew my fucking mind. When I saw this, I thought to myself, we live in a fucking simulation. How is it that an ex-president and potentially a future president who in the beginning said, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money, and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. How does that guy become this guy? This is your favorite president, Donald J. Trump, with some very exciting news. My last two Trump digital trading card collections sold out in just hours. And now I'm back with my latest series called the Mugshot Edition. I wonder where that came from, the Mugshot Edition. 47 all new stunning cards, and here is the best part. I'm doing two important things for my Trump collectors. For the first time, we're creating a real physical Trump card. Purchase 47 digital cards and we'll mail you a beautiful trading card. It is an authentic piece of the suit I wore when so I American. took that now famous mugshot. And it was a great suit. Believe me, a really good suit. <laughs> it's all cut up and this is a great suit. get a piece of it. I'll be autographing some of them. So actually, to be honest, I don't actually think this is such a bad investment. I think that Carl actually on the morning call today, he brought up that if he does become president, these cards can have a lot of value. And by the way, we did some research into his cards. The previous cards that he did, the NFT cards, are actually at 3x their, their uh, floor price. So, I mean, if you can get them, and you can go to collecttrumpcards.com, and if you can actually get them, then try. I mean, I'm, I'm not, look, don't go crazy. These are fucking fun collectibles. But if he does become president, or if it looks like he's going to become president, you know what's going to happen. This thing's going to go fucking bananas. You, you know how it works. You know exactly how it works. I don't know if to tell you. You know exactly how it works. Anyway, before we get into more altcoin news, and we will do some more altcoins, let's get into the order of the day. I know everybody wants to know what's in box number one. Is that is that the winning box? So one is the winning box. I'll put the winning box over here. I've got box number two and box number three here. How does this work? We, and we will talk altcoins in a second. How does this work? How does this work? You have to open a Bybit account with any one of the crypto banter links. When you do, I get a list of all the people that have $100 in their account. Here is the list. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stretch this all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to pick a winner. Today's winner is 5871225. If you are 5871225, what did you win? Remember, yesterday someone could have won $150,000. Let's see what it is today. So you didn't win box. You didn't win box number two. What is in box number two? I'm so scared to open this after yesterday. Electric skateboard. Ooh, electric skateboard. But you didn't win that. You didn't win that. What is in box number three? They didn't win electric skateboard. What? I'm. You know. I'm not even gonna look. Okay. I'm just gonna open it and then you tell me what's in it. No worries. 100k 100k that's two days in a row we've had 100k or was yesterday 150 yesterday was 150 today we're 100 grand you could have won 100 grand but your banter DJs chose the wrong box what did they win maybe it's the 150k from yesterday
I, what is this? So the guy could have won 100k. Instead, he won a tequila shot with Run and Jimmy on Zoom. And $1,000. Let's just give the guy $1,000. I mean, if you have to drink a tequila, let's have $1,000. So if you are account number 52871225, uh, you, you know what to do. Giveaway is at cryptobanter.com. Confirm your account and uh, you'll get that. Two days in a row, there's one day there's been 150K. Today there's been 100K. If you're still not opening up a Bybit account, when you can win 150K and you, before Christmas and you can win potentially a Bitcoin before New Year's, what the hell are you doing here? Also, by the way, guys, I need your help. Um, we are looking for a whole lot of positions at Crypto Banter. We're looking for a head of customer success. We're looking for a crypto researcher. We're looking for a lot of researchers. We're looking for a, 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 a whole lot of positions. We have taken these positions to a platform called Bondex. Bondex, they are a Web3 native jobs portal. So almost think about it like a LinkedIn of Web3. Now, the best part of this, why we actually went to this platform to post our jobs. And you can go there and apply for our jobs. We'll add links for you in the description of the show if you want to apply for the jobs. This is an amazing platform because everyone gets a reputation score. And if you want to refer someone to us, if you basically say, look, I know someone who could be an amazing crypto researcher, you can refer the person to us and then you get a finder's fee and you get it in tokens of this new, to this new product called Bondex. So I'm trying out this Bondex. Um, Full disclosure, they are sponsoring our show, but we are actually using their platform to think. Someone says Bondex sounds kinky. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess it does. It'll be much nicer if I actually manage to find people in the jobs. We need researchers. I need a head of customer service, customer success to help us. I need a growth product manager. Just look how many jobs we've got open here. Banter is flying. Banter is absolutely, absolutely flying. Uh, okay, I didn't realize the time. Shit, I better go. I've got Twitter spaces in three minutes. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Tomorrow is a full Cosmos show. I've got a good guest for you to talk Cosmos. See you guys again then. Until then, trade well, my friends.